In this video, I'm going to show you how to use EduCandy to create some simple educational games and fun activities for students to play. So here I am on EduCandy.com, and I simply go here in the upper right where it says Sign In, and I click. Now, if this is your first time using EduCandy, at this point, you would need to click this Register button and create your free EduCandy account. So here you would just set up your account, prove that you're not a robot by clicking this button, and then register for an account. Give me a minute to sign into my account, and then I'll resume the video. Now when you first register for EduCandy, after you've put in your username and email address, it's going to send you an email, and so you'll have to check your email and find the email from EduCandy, and then click the link to verify your account. Once you click the link in the verification email, it lets you pick your password and then it asks you to log into your new account. But once you've done all that and signed into your account, it should take you to a page that looks something like this. It's recommending that I create a list of either words, matching pairs, or quiz questions. And of course, eventually you'll want to do all three of these. Once you create those lists, they'll be added here as activities. So let's do a couple of examples. Let's start with words, a list of words. So I just clicked on words, and the first thing it wants is just a name for this particular activity. And I like to think of the activity name as not being the name of the game or activity itself, but of the list of words. So what words are going to be on the screen here? How about Spanish foods? Next, your activity subject. I'll put in Spanish. And notice that it recognized that as a school subject. So I just click on Spanish and then I click Create. And it takes me to a screen where I create my list of words. I'll just click here where it says Add Word and I'll type in a Spanish food. I'll click Add Word and it's added to the list over here on the right. I'll add another one. And so it does take a little while to create a list. In my opinion, though, it's totally worth it. Just by me creating this list, my students will be able to play all sorts of games utilizing this list of words that I'm generating. Give me a minute to finish creating my word list, and then I'll resume the video. Okay, I think that's a good list. So now that I'm done with the list, if I browse down the page, you can see that it displays for me a few games that can be played with the list that I've just created. Also notice that there is a handy button to delete your vocabulary list if you've changed your mind and you don't want it. There's also a duplicate activity if you want to create a second list that's similar but a little different. I'm just going to come down here and show you a couple of these games. There's the classic word search that a lot of us as teachers have decided isn't really that useful and educational, and I agree with that assessment but it can be helpful with spelling and word recognition. So there is some good that can come out of it. But as far as word searches go, I find this to be kind of fun. So there's Platano right there. I just clicked and dragged to demonstrate that I knew where the word was, and it was accepted. Here's another one, and another one here. If you get one wrong, it's like, what? What are you talking about up there at the top? If you click this button here, it resets back to a blank game. And notice that there is also a full screen option, which is really great, especially if you want to use this as a whole class activity and have the entire class looking up at the screen trying to find the words. So that's the word search. That's kind of fun. I'm going to click back and I'll zoom in again so you can see that better. But there's also a hangman game and also an anagrams game. And both of these are really pretty fun. Instead of the traditional hangman, this activity is a little bit more positive, I guess. I'll go full screen on this. And just like hangman, you're guessing letters. When you guess them correctly, they appear here. And when you get them wrong, the candy bar gets gradually eaten until the game is over. Jumping back, let me quickly show you the anagrams. Very similar, also a lot of fun. So you're probably noticing a lot of these games, yes, they could be played as a whole class activity, but most of them can also be played individually, one student on a device playing the activity. I'm going to jump back to my activities this time, and you can also get there by clicking this button. If you make a matching pairs vocabulary list, Spanish infinitive verbs, for example, you actually get a different list of games that you can play. So I'm adding a pair this time. Saltar means to jump, so I'll add that pair, and it appears here on the right. 
Hablar means to talk or to speak. Give me a minute to add a few more infinitive verbs, and I'll show you what you can do with these kinds of questions. All right, now that I'm done with this list, you'll notice I can browse down the page, and there's a whole variety of activities to go with a matching pairs list. Multiple choice quiz, that doesn't seem like much of a game or activity to me, it's just a quiz. But this is kind of fun, knots and crosses. This is basically tic-tac-toe, but what makes this stand out to me from just a typical tic-tac-toe game is in order to place your X or your O onto the game board, you have to be able to answer a question first. So let's look at this. Choose a play mode. Play against the computer or a two-player game. You can do it either way. I'm going to click play against the computer and I'll go full screen. I would really like to take this square here. So I need to know what comer means in English. It means to eat. So I'll click and drag and put that there. Now I've got the X. Now it's the computer's turn. The computer got beber, and now I can move on. I'd like to take this spot here, tocar, to touch. So I can click and drag, put that there. So you get the idea. But this makes tic-tac-toe actually fun, in my opinion, and worthwhile as a way to practice educational content. Jumping back to Spanish infinitive verbs, we're not going to take a look at every single activity that you can do, but you can see there's a crossword puzzle activity, there's a match-up activity, and memory. Going back to my activities, the final type of list that you create is a quiz question list. So for this example, I'm going to do Spanish animals. The subject is Spanish. I click create, and you just put in your question, the correct answer, and some red herrings, some incorrect answers. Give me a minute to create a few questions like this, and then I'll resume the video. Okay, now that I've set up a few questions, you can see that what you get is a multiple choice activity. You can click play and the activity begins. You get a countdown and I just need to get the right answer and try to fill this up with confetti. So yes, this is pretty much just a quiz, but at least there's some fun elements to it. There are fun images, there's a timer and things like that to make it kind of interesting for the students. Okay, so now that I've generated all of these lists and I've created activities and all sorts of things, what I can do is go back to my activities list and browse down the page, and then I can select one that I would like my students to play. So this Spanish infinitive verbs, matching pairs, I would like them to be able to play this. We could play it all together as a whole class activity. All I have to do is click play. But what if I want them to play this at home? or on their own devices at school. I could click share, and all I have to do is tell the students the code for this game. So this particular list, the Spanish infinitive verbs list, has the code 3442. So anyone that goes to educandy.com and puts in 3442 will be able to play that vocabulary list in a variety of ways. We also have two other options. I can just copy this URL, this link, that is specifically to this exact list of words. So I can just copy that, paste it onto my blog or website, or email it out to people, and anyone that goes to that link will be able to play the game. The third option is exciting to me, especially if I wanted to use that tic-tac-toe game. I could copy this embed code and actually embed that tic-tac-toe game right onto my website or my learning management system, like Blackboard, Canvas, or Schoology, or some other LMS. And that way, the game would be ready for us to play as a whole class at any point, whenever it's time to play the game. Before I end the tutorial, I need to point out that it is possible to export your questions and answers, and also to import questions and answers from other systems, from other tools that you may have used, where you have a vocabulary list or a questions and answers list. Also, there are apps for the students to use. So students can download the Educandy app from Microsoft, Google, or Apple. And for example, they could play your vocabulary lists on their iPads, on their Android devices, on their iPhones, and their Microsoft devices. They would just need to put in the code that you give them, and they will have your vocabulary list that they can play. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you found it to be helpful. If you did, please click the like button below and consider connecting with me on my social media accounts like Facebook, Pinterest, and Twitter. And definitely do subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos about technology for teachers and students. 
And when you do subscribe, click the bell next to the subscribe button. That way you'll be notified whenever I post another video. And watch for a new video from me at least every Monday. If you want to support my channel, consider becoming a supporter of mine through my Patreon account, and you'll see a link to that in the description below.